Hi, and welcome back to Stock Talk. This is Joe Rabel with Rabel Stock Research. So uh, I think this is a good time to go back and hone in on your skills and learn how to trade reversals. Um, I, it could be an environment where instead of trending for significant periods of time, we have this pattern where we reverse, we make a bottom and then we move up and then we reverse back to the downside. So I think it's worthwhile to, uh, to go into this and give you an idea of how I would go about uh, looking for these. Now, what I would tell you, is, when I look at this agenda, what I'm trying to do is, I, what I want to explain is that I like MACD for pinpointing reversals mostly, in most of the time. And the reason is, is that ADX, while a powerful tool, it can have some lag, especially at lows, because if there's a lot of volatility involved in uh, the price action, there will be lag to that indicator and you won't get a signal early enough. So the MACD can play pretty well in this circumstance. And um, I want to show you how to go about doing that, starting with the higher time frame first and uh, looking for signs of exhaustion in the momentum and then going down to the smaller time frame and just showing you a couple different ways where you can pinpoint an entry off of that. Most of the time, and what I've learned working with guys is that they have a hard time being patient. You have to be really patient on the lower time frame and waiting for that signal to develop. Um, it can be really tough, especially when you know that you have the momentum changing on the higher time frame. So uh, I'm going to go into that and then um, we're going to go through the uh, symbol requests that came through. Let's go ahead and get into this lesson now got a chart of Nike up with a weekly chart on the left and a daily chart on the right. Now, uh, what I want to do to start, I want to focus on this area up here, which corresponds to this area here. And um, what we're looking at is a really a situation where the stock had been moving up um, and we had confirmation on a MACD basis. This made new high here. We got confirmation of a new high in the MACD line. We pushed up again. We, we made. So well, the way I look at it, and this is a kind of an important point, you see this spot here and this spot here. I look at this as kind of like a reset. I'm not looking to compare this peak to this peak. When we go through a consolidation, the moving averages come together. MACD works its way down pretty close to the zero line. I'm basically starting over and I'm looking for new divergence from this point on. I don't want to go back too far. So from this point on, we make a new high, we pull back, and then this makes a higher high right here, but the MACD fails miserably at this point. So uh, at this point, what I want to do is I'm looking at this area, and in the moment, we've got all these green bars here. Green bar, green bar, green bar, another green bar, and then the biggest green bar of the run, and it's one, two, three, four, five weeks up. Uh, this is something I talk to my subscribers about is this three to five week run in a specific direction. If we get that and we're getting extended uh, from the move after a pretty decent run and we take out this high here, but we fail to make a new high in the MACD, from that point on, starting with this bar right here, I'm going to go to the smaller time frame and start to look for signs of a reversal or some kind of a turn or something like that. So let's go to that. At this point, we're watching this time frame and we're drawing in a trend line and we break the trend line coming back to the 18. So a lot of times that can be a little premature and I don't use the trend line break as an operative signal. Um, I certainly wouldn't do that when it's above the rising 18. So what I'm looking for now is the rally back up and a test of this high. So one is the trend line break and two is the test. Now I would be looking for this next signal down. If you notice, as this was rallying up, we actually had MACD failing to get above its signal line here. So I call this a pinch play when the MACD pinches in towards its signal line and we get at least two higher lows. Now we had that on this bar. The problem was when it triggered, it gapped down. So that made it a little bit, a little bit difficult to try and get in at that point. But notice what happens. We come down to the 40 and bounce off of that and we get another topping tail. And at that point, we make two higher lows. And again, notice how we're pinching back in on a MACD basis with plenty of room down to the next support, which is the zero line. So I could play this as a trade, taking out the low of this bar here 
and play it for a move to the downside. Now, if I'm playing for a specific target, like a, a like a swing trade where I'm looking to exit, uh, st- big gap downs you always want to take advantage of. It might even been out uh, on this at one point during the day. This was a big bar, and we were down, you know, several days in a row uh, coming into this prior support area. So that would have been at least a spot to take partial profits, if not take the whole thing. But that's a really great trade. You short here with a stop here, maybe a little bit higher, and then play for a swing trade. Uh, or you could also, knowing what's going on in the bigger picture, play it for a bigger play. Um, let's go and bring this up to date. So I want to look at what's happened most recently. Now let's look at the bottom. So we make a move to the downside. And notice how MACD is confirming all the way here. And then we make a move here and rally. Go to a new low. And the biggest bar in the move is this bar right here. And yet this is not making a lower low. So MACD is making a higher bottom and we have a monster bar. So this is out of my course, looking at these expansion bars, these big, huge bars. Are they extended above or are they are they igniting the move to the downside? This to me would be more like an exhaustion signal, especially with the divergence showing up in the MACD. So on this bar, I'm going down. Now that's this big gap down. I'm going down to the smaller time frame, and I'm looking for the first sign of some kind of a signal. Now, if I draw in my trend line, I've got that here. So I don't really want to take anything in this situation that's on the the low side of this trend. If any signal shows up on the bottom side of this uh, trend line, I don't really want to play that. We get the trend line break and then we actually pull back here and test this low. So that's, again, we've got the one is the trend line break and two is the test. Now look at what forms we make a lower high and another lower high and we have a pinch play. These lines are going up while price is going down counter parallel uh, where these are going one way and the, this is going the other and it's a pinch play as well we have a little pinch you can see that um, histogram pinching in a little bit to give you a little bit more of an indication but we've got a divergence on this time frame with some climax um, where this is making a higher bottom and then we get a sign of a reversal so what i don't want you to do is say oh there's a climax i want to short this here do your short sell here because I don't know how to define that trade. Where are you putting your stop? There's, I mean, you're just going to put it somewhere underneath? Um, I don't really like that. What I, I like to use multiple time frames so that when I identify something on one time frame, I go to the lower time frame to pinpoint where a reversal is taking place on this time frame. That's right here and right here. That's the first real good signal. This crossing back above these two highs, and we get nice finish with a big green bar to ignite things. Um, it turned into a pretty nice trade. Um, you could have used it as a uh, as a quick trade for a swing up to the 40, or uh, you could have trailed a stop for a bigger move since this was a big divergence. So um, I wanted to point this out. There's we're gonna have a situation. We're in a situation where the market is likely to make swings right now instead of trend. Uh, we went through a very long period of trending in the market, and now it's very possible that we could go through these interim swings. So I want you to be able to identify these reversal patterns, and um, knowing how to use MACD in this way can really help you pinpoint where to do it. All right, let's go ahead and get into the uh, individual stocks. Just briefly, my services can be found at rabelstockresearch.com. The individual package has two to three reports each week. Uh, plus a v- special video for that package. Um, and I also have a new course uh, for $100 a year. Uh, you can sign up for this trend and momentum trading course. Uh, so you can find that all at the ravelstockresearch.com forward slash services. Let's go ahead and uh, get into the uh, individual stocks now. The first request I got was the QQQ, and uh, each time I like to start with an index anyway, so uh, feel free to send over any index you have an interest in to stocktalk at stockcharts.com. So let's start with the QQQ, and I've done something a little different here. If you notice, on the upper right, I usually have a daily chart. I am going to switch to a daily in a minute, but I'm starting with a quarterly chart because I want to show, and this was happening on all the indexes, uh, we pulled back on the quarterly to the 18-month line. Now, why is that relevant? Because I don't usually pull up a quarterly. But when we go through bear markets, you tend to see when we break the 18-week 
and roll that over, then we head down to the 18-month line. And when we break the 18-month line and roll that over, then the next target tends to be the quarterly 18. Now, um, that doesn't necessarily mean we turn here, but we should be looking for signs of a reversal once we hit the next 18 MA. Um, and as I've said numerous times, you can use the 20 if you want. I use an 18 simply because it has the slope of it moves a little bit quicker than the 20. And I'm, I'm all about the slope of this line. All right, so we've come into this support zone, but look at what happened when we reached that. Number one, we had a big move in the QQQ, and look at what the MACD was doing. Look at how far away from the zero line this had gotten. It was incredibly extended and reaching a big round number at 400. Um, and then uh, we've worked our way back down. Look at how much this MACD has worked its way back down towards the zero line. We've worked off a significant portion of the overbought condition um, over the last uh, year, year and a half. So um, it doesn't mean we turn here. But again, just like this, it means we start to look for signs of a potential reversal. So look at what happens when, when we do that. We come down to this low. Look at where this makes a new low. And this is making a higher low, just like we were talking about in the Nike chart. We have a divergence in place in the QQQ. Now, when we have ADX above 25 like this, we're not necessarily looking for a massive reversal. We're looking for a, 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 a MACD reversal um, tends to mean, or a MACD divergence tends to mean a retracement and not always a reversal. OK, so we got to realize that. And I wanted to make that point um, that just because we get divergence doesn't mean we're automatically going to reverse the trend. But we can look for the first move up towards resistance, which is the 18 on the weekly chart, which is what happened. Now, one of the things I want to do, and I'm not going to show those charts, but the Dow Jones had this same kind of pattern and it went to a higher high here. And MACD actually went to a higher high here. And that was the strongest of the three indexes. All right. The, the uh, S&P had the same pattern and that worked its way up towards the 40, actually got through the 40, didn't make a new high, but it did get through the 40. And uh, the MACD also made a higher high. Now, when I'm looking at this, I can see that this just barely made it to the 18 and has really been stumbling. This is the weakest of the three indexes. All right. But I wanted to show this quarterly line real quick, just so you can see that um, we were coming into some support. Now, if we look at the daily, we've rallied up. Now, this is the key to how I would analyze this. So we've got this move off the low. The question is, how strong is this move? Because is this a move that's going to cause a reversal? Well, the only way that's going to happen is if we get real strength in this rally. And we have not had that. Look at the ADX. It can't get above 25. We've had the buyers showing um, that they've taken over control but they're not strong enough to get this really trending to the upside. And every time this tries to make a move up, it drops down. Look at these marginal new highs, and then we get a retracement, another marginal new high, and then a retracement. This is not the type of price action that suggests this is ready to go. So um, one of the keys that I think to keep an eye on, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, is this... Uh, is this relative strength line. So this is the relative strength versus the S&P. Um, when this line is declining or trending lower, it's underperforming the S&P. And when it's trending upwards or it's going up, it's, it means that it's outperforming uh, the S&P. So we continue to trend lower on a relative basis uh, in the QQQ. Now this is getting ready to break the, uh, the 40, which I think is a negative, but, um, I'd probably be watching this trend line here. Um, I think there's some risk in this. Um, it might actually do one of these. If, it, if it's going to reverse to the downside, then I would be looking for something, some kind of a pattern like that, as opposed to just a straight down move to the downside. And because of that quarterly line that I showed, I'm not necessarily looking for this to just get blown out to the downside. That's not really what's in my head. I think if you look at the way this is breaking down, and if we were to look at this as a two time frame pattern, it's going to take some time. Now, I want to show you a couple other stocks that are biggest components in the QQQ. Look at how the, Q, the uh, Google 
is dropping. It's showing really poor performance. It barely got to the 18. It doesn't have any sign of divergence here. Uh, still on a strong downtrend. And we can draw the downtrend line. It hasn't even come close to being broken. Very, very weak stock. So if, if that's the case, then I've got to be real careful about buying the QQQ. If, we've got, if we start going through and looking, look at Amazon, look at how weak this stock is relative to the general market. Now, what I would tell you is as long as these lines are in a downtrend below their trend lines and below this 30-week MA of the relative strength line, making lower highs and lower lows, we don't want to be messing with these and we probably don't want to be messing with the Qs yet. It's too early. And the, the one thing I'll tell you, when you start to look at the quarterly and the monthly, it looks like this is going to be a time-consuming process. It doesn't mean we can't rally. And a stock like Amazon probably sets itself up, because it's near the lows, probably sets itself up um, to have a little overthrow into the new year and make a new low and then reverse early next year sometime in the first quarter and get some, a pretty decent rally. That's probably what I'd be expecting there. Um, when, we, when we open up the year near the high and we close the year near the low, look for follow through into the new year and then a reversal. Okay. Um, now look at META. Uh, Meta has gotten murdered pretty significantly. It's trying to put in a low here, but there's no sign of momentum divergence. And remember, we were looking at MACD working off and coming down to the zero line on Google and on um, the QQQ. Look at how this has busted through that. Now, this is getting maybe oversold for a rally, but this is a much different position than the QQQ. This is a broken pattern that might rally but it's going to take a long time to recover. This has got to go through a full mending process. Um, we're getting a rally. We've got a little like momentum divergence in place off the MACD, but we're getting a rally. But notice the way it's rallying. You see how this is just a simple rally with no strength whatsoever. MACD is just barely getting through the zero line. We should be expecting another test of these lows in a stock like this. This is just not really ready um, to make a major turn, I don't think. Now, you can make money trading these stocks. I'm not saying you can't do that, but you're going to need to be nimble and your skill level is going to need to be pretty high. If you're looking to play these for a bigger picture pattern, like a longer term reversal, I would not do anything more than a small piece to start out because if I'm looking at something like this, I want to look at it like a bell-shaped curve. It's not going to be a V-bottom. It's going to be a bell-shaped curve, which means right now, if we're bottoming right now, we're on the left side, and we want to work our way to the right side. We have to form a base here. We need some kind of a base-building process to form, and that takes time. And that could take at least six months and maybe 12 months in a stock like this um, to go through that process. Now, again, if you want to trade, we look for a sign that we're getting through the 18 and we have room up to the 18 month and we're going to be looking for momentum improvement on this time frame. You can do that, but to look for it as a long-term reversal pattern in the damage that's done here, I just don't think is going to be all that profitable. Let's look at NVIDIA, another big name. Now, this was actually showing much better strength. You see the rally made it through the 18 pretty considerably. The MACD actually did make a higher high, but price is not making a higher high. So we've got a little bit of reverse divergence develop. And um, while this is a little bit better, you see how the ADX here has gotten above 25 and has been holding above 25? That's showing that this rally has a little bit more legs to it. The biggest problem we've got is we're coming up against a 18 month line that's rolling over. You see how this, this is the 18 month line overlaid on the weekly chart. Um, now there is some sign of improvement on a relative basis, but not definitive enough to expect us to uh, definitely make a bottom. I mean, I could see this coming back down and testing the 18 week here. Um, and uh, I think that's probably, I think that's a pretty high probability in something like this, uh, where we've shown some signs of improvement and uh, we look like we're a little overbought. Look at how many weeks in a row. Look, see how many weeks in a row this has moved up. Um, we, we're due for some kind of a pullback. So I think that's probably the highest probability in something like this. Now, what I wanted to do is um, I wanted to show the cues because that was a request. I wanted to show a couple of these big names and why this is going to be very hard for the QQQ to turn quickly. But let's look at the CAT, Caterpillar. 
Look at the difference in this. This is more representative of what a, a lot of the Dow, not all of the Dow's, a lot of Dow stocks are showing better strength off their low. This is a dynamic rally off the bottom. The momentum here does matter. So if we're looking at a stock that's making, making moves like this, we want to look at each one of these moves, each one of these legs, and look at the momentum condition. So anytime this rallies up, we want to register and look at this and see what kind of momentum registers here. Look at the strength of this. See the strength of the buyers? The green DI is breaking out above all of these lines going back for you know over a year now. That's a sign of strength. It doesn't mean this can't pull back and pause. It might even want to do that and get back closer to the uh, to the uh, zero line on the daily chart. But the relative improvement, the strength off the low suggests to me that this has a lot of support underneath as opposed to having resistance overhead like a lot of these stocks do. Uh, let's look at Schlumberger. So um, we've got this situation now in the uh, energy stocks where they have worked off some overbought. They, they, they were overbought and they needed to pull back. Now we have to see if the daily chart is going to trigger because we've got this pattern of lower highs and lower lows in place. MACD has now worked down to the zero line. We don't have a lot of strength in the sellers here. So now we need to see sign of strength by breaking the downtrend line in some of these stocks. So until that happens, you, you assume you're in a correction on the weekly chart and we need to wait for a trigger on the daily chart before having any interest in this. But I think you can still be watching some of these stocks. Now, some of them came in a little too hard. Their violence broke the 18 and the 40, and we got to be uh, really careful about uh, doing anything like that. Um, let's look at the uh, Lily. Lily has been a great stock. You see how this has been moving up, but it hasn't checked back to the 18 month line in quite a while. It's been doing that on the daily chart, and, and overall pattern looks pretty good. There's pretty good momentum conditions, really nothing wrong. If we go to the daily, we've made a higher high here. MACD did not confirm, but the worst part about this is the ADX couldn't get above 25. This is telling us to be on the lookout for a reversal and probably a little bit more of an extreme correction coming in this than we've seen in a while. Uh, that's what I'd be looking for in this stock. Uh, let's go to PINS. This is another one that got in trouble, right? I mean, this has been really been brutal how long and how bad this has been going down. It's starting to find support here on the weekly chart, but we're, we've worked our way back to the zero line. Now the question becomes, and, and it also we've worked our way back to the zero line, but we're not showing a lot of strength here. So now the question becomes, are we going to reverse down from here or are we going to break through to the upside? So... I mean, I do, uh, the request that came through was talking about this uh, potential on the daily, but I think you can't look at this without deciding what is really going on on the higher time frame. And I don't see anything definitive yet. What I've been telling my subscribers is that I don't really want to buy the breakout pattern. I want to see this breakout and kind of hold and then turn back up. And we're going to need to see this come back up through the breakout area and hold this area right now. And I really want to see green hold on a pivot here to kind of prove that this is truly a breakout. Right now, we don't really have a confirmed breakout yet. I know it got through these highs, but I don't see this as a confirmed breakout at this point, especially with what's going on on the weekly. So I'd actually like to see it maybe even have a really good day with some good volume something like that. And I'd feel a little bit better about trading this to the upside. Know that we do have resistance at the 18 month line. That would be the target for that trade. Um, Indian stock, another one with a really strong move to the upside. And look at this consolidation, great momentum condition in place. Going through a pause phase and the MACD is holding the zero line with low ADX. I mean, a lot of good things going on here. Very, very interesting the way this is playing out. I could definitely consider this. I would like to see this get back through 550 from a short term standpoint, but uh, really a good looking pattern here. Um, AIG is uh, another one that look at the move off the low. You see how strong a move this was? You see how this got back above the 18 month line? We're testing this high. But we could go through a correction or a pretty harsh sell-off in this and still be below above the 18-month and above these moving averages here. So um, this is the type of stock I'd watch on a pullback. If this works its way back down to the zero line, I think this could be pretty attractive. So um, I'm kind of intrigued by something like this. Look at EXTR. 
look at the strength in this. Now remember, look go look at the XLK. Look at what's going on in the sector. The the uh, the uh, technology sector has been getting creamed. This stock is making a really strong move, breaking to all time highs. Yes, it's overbought. Yes, it needs to pull back. But this is the type of stock we want to watch for as it works its way back towards the 18-week line. So good stock, really good stock that's gotten overbought. It needs to go through some kind of a correction. That's one of the things that scares me a little bit about the market is some of the best-looking stocks still need look, look like they need to pull back. Um, FIVN. So, uh, I mean, this is more representative of what's been going on in technology. We are now at a really critical level at the 18-week line. We've gotten a rally off the low without a whole lot of strength here. So, um, it does look like we've put a low in, and I think there's a lot of support at 50, but it's also possible we're going to come back down and test this bottom here. Um, so, I don't know that I'd be in a big hurry to play this, especially because it's uh, so overbought and it just filled the gap. Thanks for watching. My course and my services can be found at RabelStockResearch.com. If you have an interest in sending over some stock requests, send it to StockTalk at StockCharts.com. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.